what does a cardiologist think of the keto diet? So some of you don't know me. I'm a cardiologist. I'm also a certified personal trainer. I've uh, been studying and talking about weight loss and lecturing about it for almost 20 years now. Uh, I'm going to go over all of the research and all the studies on what uh, the science shows about the keto diet. Now, for all of you, uh, before we begin, um, I know that diets are a bit of a sensitive topic to people because a lot of people view their diet as a religion. I tell people, and if you read my book, um, you'll find out that I'm diet agnostic. I really don't care what diet you follow. Um, the research has shown that regardless of what macronutrient breakdown you follow, if the weight comes off, then uh, your cardiovascular markers all improved. So back to keto, which is what we're trying to get at today. So um, there's been a lot of talk in the news. Now, the keto diet, for those of you who don't know, it's a high fat, you know, high protein, almost no carb diet, similar to Atkins and South Beach. Um, Atkins came out in the 1990s, then it and it was more high protein and low carb. Um, South Beach diet was Dr. Agaston, who's actually also a cardiologist that invented the heart scan, the CT scan for the coronaries. Um, he came out with South Beach diet. So instead of eating, you know, unhealthy proteins and fats, why don't we swap them out for healthier proteins and fats, and you know, make the Atkins diet a little healthier. Um, both of whom were uh, doctors, Dr. Atkins obviously, and Dr. Agaston. Um, so that's kind of where it started. Now it's been taken to another level, where it's more fat. Uh, than protein now of course don't you know bombard me with comments because you know you modified the keto diet and you eat more protein it's totally fine there are different variations of it uh, but the vast majority of people that follow a keto diet follow it with the higher fat uh, intake and there's been tons and tons of studies uh, on this now the keto people will always go and say well you know the ansel keys seven country studies the scs uh, study was a little bit biased or something like that you know that was a study from 1958 uh, there have been thousands of follow-up studies now um, talking about red meat and uh, saturated fat and all that and how it relates to heart disease so first of all um, you can do the keto diet if you want to if you feel that that's a really good way for you to adhere to a calorie restriction, then have at it. Do the keto diet. Now, there are some people that should not do the keto diet or keto style heavy fat uh, diets. Um, these are cardiac patients. These are mostly my patients. If you have heart disease or don't want to have heart disease later in life, um, you really should not be eating that much saturated fat. And we'll go over the evidence and I'll put all the studies up here in a second. Um, you really shouldn't be eating that much saturated fat. So why? So tons of studies have been done now, and I'll link tons of them below. Um, actually, they're all in my book. If you want to grab my book, you can grab it on Amazon for around 18 to 25 bucks, depending on which version you want. But for, you know, down here, you can grab the PDF for much, much cheaper. Um, but either way, um, the studies will be listed and you'll have access to all of them. But saturated fats have been shown without question now. Like anybody who tells you, well, no, saturated fats are good for you. A little bit is good for you and if you're super lean uh, and you're not overweight or, or you know morbidly obese you don't have high inflammation the number one cause of inflammation is obesity if you're very obese and overweight yeah saturated fat and red meat takes a toll on your body saturated fat uh, and red in red meat especially is very atherogenic there's not a single study you'll, you won't find a single study that shows that red meat doesn't raise cholesterol um, not one. There's not one single study that shows increasing your intake of red meat does not raise cholesterol. Now, um, there are some people say, well, what about, you know, what about this recent study or this recent guideline that was published saying saturated fat is not an issue anymore? Um, that was October 2019. There was this group of people that looked at one single study where they took people who ate about 10% of their total calories from saturated fat and lowered it to like 8 or 9% or something around that much. They were eating like 10 to 12% of their calories from saturated fat, lowered it to like 8 or 9%, and we really didn't see a difference in cardiovascular outcomes. So the problem with that study, if you actually read it or read other studies, and I always tell people you have to look at the totality of evidence. One single study and then changing the guidelines based on one single study is just insane. Uh, but one single, that one single study, if you look at it, they, they lowered people's total, total saturated fat levels by minimal. Like you're already eating almost 10% uh, cholesterol and now you're lowering it to 8 or 9%. There's not going to be a huge difference. Now, we have seen that when people lowered their saturated fat intake 
significantly like like for example the finland study and i do i have like a whole video on the finland study but if you look at the finland study where an entire population of people was eating kind of almost keto they were rural people lots of butter lots of dairy lots of meat um, red meat chicken skin all that stuff butter bacon cheese you know all the saturated fat 23 to 26 percent of their calories were coming from saturated fat they reduced those calories down to about 10 percent or less and you saw a 84% reduction in cardiovascular uh, mortality. Other studies based on Ansel Keys data and that same data set of people, they continue to follow them. Uh, later studies were published where people ate more of this, uh, they call it a Cretan diet or Mediterranean diet. People ate more of a Mediterranean style diet. Their uh, uh, all cause mortality went down by 55%. Um, cardiovascular mortality went down by 77%. And you know, all kinds of uh, reductions that are just tremendous so it makes no sense to look back at a study from 1958 and saying well you know it was this one bad study but the keto people love doing that like if you look at gary taubes um his name's dr gary taubes he's not a doctor he's a journalist but he's a doctor um regardless he publishes a lot of books on keto and he's been debated on youtube you can look up debates with him you know at conferences he's been debated um he basically said in many of his debates that, look, even if you bring me evidence to prove to, to me that I'm wrong and my data is all wrong and my studies are all wrong, I'm not going to change my mind. I still think that the only way to lose weight is keto. And that's another problem that I have with people who have diet religions. When they say the only way to lose weight or the only way to lose weight based on science is keto or intermittent fasting, like Jason Fung, Dr. Jason Fung, nephrologist from Canada, um, wrote the book Obesity Code, basically says that the only way on earth to lose weight is intermittent fasting. Now, there have, and he says calories in, calories out don't matter. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's funny. But um, if calories in, calories out isn't working for you, that's a whole other story. We'll get to that in another video. Um, but the studies that he looked at didn't even measure calories in and calories out. And he looked at intermittent fasting. If there have been studies now comparing intermittent fasting, that are with an isocaloric diet that's continuous eating all throughout the day. Multiple studies now, this, you get the same amount of weight loss, same amount of reduction in cardiovascular risk factors. The studies have all shown that if you lose weight, regardless of how you lose that weight, then you will uh, improve all of your cardiovascular markers, all your inflammatory markers, cholesterol, insulin resistance, uric acid, you know, high sensitivity CRP, Anything you can imagine that measures inflammation or measures, you know, actual death rates and all that all uh, comes down. So I'm not telling you not to do keto, but if you want to live a really long time and, and even young people, young people, if you want to do keto for a little bit of time just to get some weight off, but then switch to a better, uh, you know, more well-rounded diet, that's fine. Um, the other issue the, the, I tell people the only diet that's ever been proven to reduce all you know cardiovascular mortality uh, and, re and reduces about 12 different kinds of cancer is the Mediterranean diet. And if you don't know what that is, it's easy to look up. It's lots of fruits and vegetables, whole grains, you know, olive oil, canola oil, things like that that are you know um, very wholesome and nutritious. Obviously, makes sense. That's what works. Now, a lot of people say, well, I do keto because it gives me more energy. It it can, and people do feel good on it. And if you feel good on it. That's fine, but they've also looked at people who are in a calorie restriction versus, you know, the same amount of calories, keto versus non-keto. They all feel better when you're calorie restricted and you're, you know, burning fat and you're, you know, burning energy um, as opposed to eating it all and gaining weight or maintaining your weight. You do feel better. You get some mental clarity, some mental fog goes away. So that's all been shown. Um, the other thing I don't like about keto is that it... Um, severely limits athletic performance now sure you could look at say you could look at well look at this athlete look at that athlete you know they're keto only and this is you know they're doing these amazing things sure there are exceptions to the rule the vast majority of us you run marathons endorse sports even strength athletes you need carbohydrates uh, as a personal trainer uh, we tweak your macros, you know, your sat, your fats, proteins, uh, carbohydrates to match your goals. If your goals are to get stronger, get bigger muscles or endurance type sports, you are going to need carbohydrates. There's just no question about it. Sure, there are exceptions to the rule. Um, and if you want to do keto, I'm not against you. Go for it, but select healthier fats. Um, the cretin diet or the, the Mediterranean diet, a lot of studies have been done where they just took out saturated fat and substituted it for polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, significant reductions in mortality, all cause mortality as well as cardiovascular mortality. So that would be my thoughts on the keto diet. If you enjoyed it, grab my book. All the studies are in there and I'll put some of them 
uh, on the screen as well as in the links below.